Hi everybody! <laughs> Good morning. Uh, I just got up um, and I had a sneeze attack. <laughs> so here's my coffee. So today we are going to uh, look at the reply or the response to this seven day challenge that Callum did. Uh, that we looked at previously uh, and it's the CEO of, of Earth 2 here's their website uh, as it looks today and you can see that they have built on on top of Mapbox technology we have created a geographically linked digital grid layer that spans across the entire planet allowing people to claim ownership of virtual land in the form of tiles that's their phase one they're going to be a phase two and a phase three also i believe and they are saying that it's going to be a game in the end but right now all that you can do is buy tiles and you can also build hollow buildings which i'm not sure what they are what they do <laughs> and um, except for probably look nice i don't know uh and you can also also like mine resources at some point and they have a really complicated system for putting stuff on your land that will boost your research or your resource gathering i guess and i i guess <laughs> those resources will be used for something later but right now I don't even know if that happens or if they are just developing that I think the latter and here's their vlog number two that many people are talking about and I'm gonna show a bit of it just to sh just to show you what I am going to talk about soon Dear Earth2 players and community, in this vlog we'll be introducing details about the first EcoSim building, the water processor. This is so the they have built this water processor. You can put buildings on your land later, I think. Uh, right now you can build your own buildings, like hollow buildings. Uh, but this uh, video seems to indicate that you will have a set of pre-built buildings that you'll be able to put on your land and the, this is the water processor that will process water i guess <laughs> first building of many we have designed and planned to showcase over coming weeks and months initial showcases will focus on buildings being visually represented in their phase two model and let me just say uh visually it, it's fine like if i compare to other games that i've played it's like sure that looks like a thing it doesn't scream water to me which might end up be, being confusing in a game if i want to find my water towers unless this is the only tower that sticks up like this uh then i might be able to find the format them. pertinent to the earth 2 eco sim but we can confirm with much excitement that over time our showcases will proceed to reveal other buildings such as houses shops skyscrapers transportation st so this, these uh what do you call it Rib rivets <laughs> you know the the nails here that it's not nails it's like where there there is uh, uh the pieces are welded together by these blurps <laughs> <laughs> I do know a lot of lingo, I promise. Well, uh, anyways, these lines here and everything, that's probably texture, like from an image. And so it's not like so, not a 3D um, artist hasn't gone and done all of these small details. That's probably just like bump mapping and, and the texture image stations, educational facilities, marketplaces, yeah, they're social gonna hubs, do a lot vehicles, of buildings. and more. It's important to note that our technical team have been working on specialized proprietary technology that will... Our technical team has been working on specialized proprietary 
what, what did it say? Software or technology? It's important to note that our technical team have been working on specialized proprietary technology that will not only allow... Proprietary technology. So remember that. Uh, actually, let me... Propri... How do I... Proprietary software. Look here. Um, also known as non-free software or closed source software is computer software for which the software's publisher or another person reserves some licensing rights to use, modify, share modifications, or share the, the software, restricting user freedom with the software they lease. Uh, it is the opposite of open software or free software. So, now, Unity is free for people like me that are just going to make a little project. Uh, so I have it here and it's going on about, I haven't, there's a new version. Uh, I haven't installed it yet. So I made a little model here of a thing. I, I can change that out and or like, you know, just remodel it, change, change its appearance, put it in there. And then when I play the game, here's, here's the game part. So when I play the game, I, it, it, they're going to randomly change uh, colors. And let me go into the scene here so that we can choose one part here. So this cylinder is changing color and changing the metallicness and the smoothness. And there's also different, there are more uh, properties that we could, uh, that we can change. Where is it? I think, uh, yeah, so. That I got it yesterday. I found found a whole list of things. Anyway, so so it's uh, doing that in real real time. <laughs> Whatever that means. I mean, it's doing it before your eyes. It's like changing in here. Yeah. And if I'm not using proprietary software, <laughs> mark my words. Uh, if, where is it? If we go here on the prefab, there's a script attached that does this. And you have an update too. <laughs> okay, fine. Here's the script. Uh, it's not something that I'm particularly proud of. Oh my God, you can't see it. Here it is. Uh, because I, it took me like two hours to do this. And that was because I'm new to Unity, uh, fairly new. Uh, I'm just learning. Uh, so this bit here runs where, when the program starts. Uh, and I go through all the renderers in the model, get all of them and add them to a list. And I add uh, in a enable keyword, I'm not sure you need to do this, but I have a comment up there that is a straight comment. There you go. And then every update, like that, that's every step of step in the game when it runs, it runs in steps. So every every time it takes a step, I do this color change thing. And yeah, if you know code, you'll see what my code does. If you don't. Let me just say it, it changes the color <laughs> and the metallicness and the smoothness and I could add more things, but I thought this was enough to prove my point. Uh, oh, that's the wrong window. One of my favorite things. To oh, and here's the tutorials that I'm watching to be able to do that. Uh, here instead of video. So they're they're like boasting about this. 
Sneak. Technical team have been working on specialized proprietary technology that will not only allow us to procedurally load and stream these buildings as 3D objects inside our massive one-to-one -one scale digital replication of the plan. Now, if any player ever is impressed by going into game, any game, and finding that 3D objects are there, <laughs> like if if any player is impressed by that as if it's like new or anything like that i don't know what to tell you like most games i play have you ever played sim city like it's a very old franchise uh when you come into it uh there's 3d objects in there have you played sims 2 it was released in 2002 uh, there's 3d objects in there <laughs> not as big as world a uh, world of this uh, this earth 2 is claiming to create a really 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 big world and that that is what they sh should be talking about this loading 3d object is not impressive unless you do it in such a scale <laughs> that it becomes impressive planet earth but importantly allow for this to be done at lightning speed and support significant player customization as you can see in this footage this specialized 3d object is using our proprietary shader system that will provide earth 2 players with an incredible amount of surface customization on objects they own so they he has said that they have a proprietary shader system that is supposed to be impressive so that he can change the color and the metallicness of this object. Not entirely unlike I did here, I would think. I mean, this model doesn't look any anything like his model, uh, but that's not the point. I just slap this together basically i could even i could remove parts of it um and it, it it will still work so i'm not using proprietary software i'm using unity and the reason everyone is saying like we're not impressed by this is because this can be done by a noob following guides on the internet the only <laughs> let me tell you uh i was googling and i found this set float uh in a code example and they had spelled it it was back in 2017 they had posted they had spelled it with a small s like this not not the capital s and um it it's possible that it was correct back then but <laughs> nowadays need a big capital s here in set float otherwise uh the function is not recognized by the compiler <laughs> so and, and that set me back like four to five minutes because i just kept go googling instead of going to the documentation like a normal <laughs> developer and uh checking what it should be um yeah Let's stop using it and take all my processing power. So that's that. That's why people are uh, not impressed by this tech because uh, it it is impressing, impressive if they if they actually built this from the ground up. If they built a new engine to be able to handle all of these things, it's impressive that they did that and that they have the same functionality as another engine is actually impressive i couldn't build a, new, a whole new engine that is a huge project in and of itself so if they like have been spending their time on doing that that is impressive however uh it could be debated if it's a, a time well spent when there's already ed engines doing that um what you're showing that do the same things so you could ask yourself like 
they should be talking about why they decided to build new software to do things that everyone already has. <laughs> that's, that's what they should be talking about, not hyping up for color changing. Our solution not only accommodates for the coloration adjustment on numerous visual components, but goes further by supporting the alteration of surface types such as metallic or dielectric material and even yeah um i don't know what he means by dielectric material but i had i had um see here how the color is changed like this you just take the material you take the color and you put put a value to the color basically um and um, this function here returns a color type. Anyway, but that when you when you do glossiness and metallic, you couldn't just do that. I couldn't find code examples that did it the same way. So you know need to do this set float business of down here. So uh, I I had to Google a little bit to find this and also. To find to spell it right, <laughs> so, but it's right there in Unity. And further, by providing controls for surface shininess, this solution will give our players creative control over how each building is visually represented on their. Yeah, uh, the thing, also as I said in the last ses session we had, the thing is that he's talking with. with very big words just to say that the user will be able to customize their buildings with color and smoothness and metallicness and dielectric pro yeah, properties. Um, and he's talking as if that's impressive. <clears throat> it's, it's kind of like if you're building a car, you're not going to go on and on about that. The fact that the car has wheels. You are going if you're if you want to impress with your wheels, you're going to tell people what is so special about them. Uh, like the the rubber we used in the tires comes from this uh, very special plant we found, <laughs> and it's make your, fa your car go faster. You know, I don't know anything about cars. Um, anyway, so let's. Let's just get to the response to Callum challenge thingy. Okay, so so background story. Uh, the CEO challenged uh, a specific developer that was saying the things that I just said. Um, that to well, if you're so great, then do it yourself. So he had seven rules, and. Uh, he Callum could do that in seven days and if he did if he won the challenge he would get ten thousand uh, dollars I don't know if it's U US dollars or Australian dollars or what but <laughs> monies and yeah let's let's just uh, let Shane Isaac his name is uh, Tell us if what happened and if Callum did the challenge. And the reason I'm doing it like this is I feel I'm biased towards Callum. Uh, I just like the guy better. So, <laughs> so because I feel like I'm biased, I'm going to not show you Callum's video. I'm going to go off only on Shane's video. Um, now, as uh, Josh uh, Strife Hayes pointed out, like uh, Shane put this on YouTube, which is a social platform uh, made <laughs> meant for entertainment. So uh, the rules on YouTube is, uh, I mean, it's public relations, isn't it? Like uh, he is putting something out uh, publicly and uh, he's putting it pu publicly, but it's directed towards one person. And when you are uh, speaking in the public domain, like publicly, uh, 
right and wrong starts to dissolve a little bit because like if you come off as a particularly nasty person <laughs> then then you are wrong um in a way that is, might not be technically wrong but you might be um you know it might not be a good look for you <laughs> let me say that like that so um i might get back to that so hello everybody hello you doing well and you're keeping safe just wanted to start off and say something mm. about developers I also i have watched this before so it's not a reaction it's more like a commentary love developers you guys are amazing whether when you're stuck there he goes again, uh, sucking up to developers, and uh, I think it's good that he realizes that he needs to do that because, um, yeah, the the alternative <laughs> would be really sucky. Like if he said, "I hate developers," then he could like step out of that room after making this video and saying, "Okay, I seem to not have any a team anymore that should." I don't have any developers left. Uh, what am I going to do? Uh, so, so of course you love developers. They are what are making what you are going to sell. <laughs> Starting out and you're in your prime. Hell, you guys are responsible for some of the best moments that I personally had in my life playing games. And when I say playing games, I mean that gaming has been part of my DNA since a young kid. Yeah, yeah, you know. Myself um <clears throat> everyone was playing these games weren't we weren't we all playing these games growing up like sonic sim city uh, whatever this is is it mario i don't remember but i was playing it i, I remember you push this button here and things happen um zelda i mean he, th this these are the popular games i feel don't believe me? Here are a few of the games that I've played for hours, weeks, months, and years on end. And yes, these are the games I played more than Also, what does this matter? <laughs> I don't understand. We I all played game games. Freak. So, why did I say well, And it would be very strange for him to, to claim he was uh, developing a game unless he played some of the games. Also, like, what is going on with this window? I can't figure it out, really. Like, is this a reflection? Because <laughs> I was staring at this when I watched it the first time, and it's stu stupid, but <laughs> it's what happened. So if you look over here, you have uh, the sh shades are like open, or what What do you call it? The <laughs> rulgarin. Keeping the sun out thingies. They are up here, but, and the, and here is an edge that looks pretty much the same as this one. But what is this building outside? Is it is, is it a building that's very close to this house? Or is this a reflection of what comes in from here? Because is this black thing here? Is that this part here? Or this part here? I don't know. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> Like, please, please move the camera closer so I can have a look. <laughs> it's very important to me. What is going on with your window? <laughs> because at, uh, for a while I was like, does he have a big screen projecting a building outside? It's a very oddly shaped building as well. It, it's like not not a ninety degrees corner over there. It's like more more like this. <laughs> And it was very distracting. as opposed to the other YouTubers who attack us. Oh, we're not attacking you. Wait, wait, am I saying we? Am I a part of the shadow cabal now? I don't know. But it's I haven't seen any attacks. Um, I have I have seen critical, um, like people are critically picking apart your video videos looking at them uh like uh, analyzing the language that it, uh, is being used like in this one uh you could have just said users can change 
colors on their buildings. But no, <laughs> you, you went on and on about proprietary software. And it's to a layman, if I can call myself that, I don't know. But it sounds like uh, you are trying to use words that are impressive just because they are impressive, not because what you're showing is impressive. And it leaves a very strange taste in my mouth. Like it, it's like, what are you trying to feed me here? And so, so I don't think that's an attack. I just feel like that is, hey, I think this might be, uh, I might, I, okay. So the, the impression that is being made is you are, I, I get the impression allegedly, whatever, um, that you're trying to boast yourself up to more than what you are. And that is uh, a red flag. And I wouldn't, I would not invest in a company that does that too much. Uh, I, I understand you gotta do it a, a bit, but when you do it to a certain de degree, it starts to be like, hey, w what do you have then? Like, so, uh, but so far, I mean, my interpretation of this <clears throat> is like, they're not using Unity, Unity's engine, because if they are, then, then the words in this video is total bullshit. But if they're built their, their own engine, it's actually impressive. Don't count them out. Because Although it might not have been a good <laughs> investment of time <laughs> into the project. Okay, wh what is he talking about yeah, now? YouTubers who attack us. What are tacos? I we single tell them out because, quite honestly, if we were at an event or if we met under different circumstances. Yeah, if if I if I had met this guy before I seen these videos and heard him talk about because I don't think I like in this video when they're using the, that language it feels very scripted and I think if you met this guy uh, when he was not using that kind of la language uh, I think he would talk about cool stuff and I would probably listen and I would probably want to have a drink with him or something like not in that way just like hear what he has to say um, but this stance that he has now he comes off to me as very hostile and I I would like I would no longer want to have the drink with him I would like to stand uh, behind the person that stands behind the person that has the drink with him and and listen to see what he says <laughs> you know I would like to distance myself but I still want to hear what he says <laughs> Callum would be the exact type of guy that I'd be geeking out with, talking about games, talking about tech, like, and having fun. Why are you so angry at him then? The other YouTubers that create videos against us, they don't really know what they're talking about, so it doesn't bother me so much. The issue is, Callum is an actual developer. You know what the impression I get from that? Yeah, I someone give him some, uh, what do you call it, media training? Because this is not a good look. You know what you just said? You said that the other YouTubers that don't know what they're talking about, they are harmless. But Callum, he knows what he is talking about. He knows the tech, he knows the business, he knows the industry. And he is calling you out and saying your things are not as good as you say they are. And because he knows what he's talking about, um, you are actually very, very, very afraid of him saying that because people might... Um, People might understand that they are not. 
And that frustrates me when he creates videos that intentionally mislead tech that we're working on. You know what? Uh, you said in the beginning that you love developers. Don't you know developers? <laughs> like, don't you know how developers work? How a mindset of a developer is? A developer will see something, say that that is not true. I, I need to speak up and tell you what is true. And the, there's oftentimes not a, like an alternate, ulterior motive. It's just like, I saw something, it was wrong. I am going to tell you how it actually is. Here it is. And if that scares you, I'm not even gonna end that sentence. Before we go on, I'd like to show you a little clip of the actual developer that was working on our proof of concept who Callum was criticizing. And may I say... Okay, so we're gonna see a clip of a developer. What? The thing that you're going to see next is completely created by that developer alone with programming and art included. Okay. Did he just say this was all created by one developer? Uh, we need to we need to know Criticizing and may I say the thing that you're going to see next is completely created by that developer alone with programming alone. and art included Yeah, it sounds like it doesn't it? Uh, doesn't it? It sounds like this was all created by one developer now I haven't looked into it but I saw a comment somewhere uh, that uh, this bit here will include uh, things from multiple developers, like things you could get on the asset store or something. I don't, I don't know, actually. But um, and also, it's very strange that that this bit here is uh, is blacked out. I think Callum, no, not Callum, Josh Dryface said, does. Does anyone else think it sounds like Josh Dryface? Because it sounds like it to me every time I say it. <laughs> it's Stripe Haze. Anyway, um, what was it called? Uh, Altera, I think. Uh, so, so this is uh, some other project. <laughs> you can just check this out. <clears throat> it's not important right now, but you know, check it out. It's something uh, and I, I think like this black bit here like it's very fishy that he blacks it out why uh, yeah I'm not gonna lie this is very cool uh, I wish I could do these things Uh, also, uh, me saying I'm not gonna lie at a certain point, uh, like I'm not gonna lie uh, at all. <laughs> I'm not sitting here lying, you guys. I mean, those effects, it's very impressive, right? This is beautiful, also. Like, it's yeah, what is this? Click and drag, look around, right click, zoom, uh, try all the buttons. Oh, it says so right here, horizon. What is that? I need to check it out. Horizon. Is it a game? Is this? No, this is not the same thing. It's written like that. How would you find that when there's not a game called Horizon? <sighs> there's a Wikipedia. Uh, okay. But this is, it doesn't mention Horizon. It doesn't mention if there's an other game. <laughs> uh, no. Well. Oh. 
I'm just like, if if it's gonna put something on here, I kind of want to know what it is. But it's like impossible to find. Uh, if if you have links or whatever to whatever, is this a game or is it just, you know? Still blacked out here. <laughs> Why is it blacked out? Oh, is he like trying not to dox that particular developer? Maybe, might be. But you know, <laughs> you know, if it's if he's on your team, uh, then it's, it's gonna be here. <laughs> so it's gonna be one of these guys, right? So, so it's weird that you black it out. <laughs> Like if if this was oh, okay, not particularly this frame. <laughs> if this was all uh, made by one person, like everything, like all of these trees here and everything, it's it's quite impressive. And I would be proud too if I had that person on the team. So what you saw just yeah yeah. Thanks. Uh, it's very impressive that you have a guy like that on the team. Uh, if they indeed did all of those things themselves, with art and everything, like, yeah. But it also begs the question, one of those things was like a whole game. Hasn't that person worked on, the, on a team to make that game? Uh, I would hope so. <laughs> there was what one, one of our devs who worked on the proof of concept that Callum criticized, one of our devs was responsible for the programming and the artwork together on what you just saw. So that one developer made uh, an entire game called Horizon, apparently. Uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but it's very impressive if it is. And that's what frustrates me. You've got somebody like Callum, who really sounds like he talks the talk, yeah, you know, you know, you're a you're a CEO of a company. If someone comes up to you and uh, <laughs> say say like what you have presented is not impressive at all, uh, if you have any self preservation um, instincts at all, what you do is not attack that person. <laughs> what you do is you uh, ask him questions. What what can we do to accentuate how impressive our tech is? And would you care to, like, for a fee, helping us with that? Also, would you like to join the team? You seem to be very knowledgeable. That's what you do. You don't challenge them to some stupid internet drama challenge designed to try and make him fail. That's not what, you, it's not a good look. It's not good PR, <laughs> you know? And I don't even know PR, but I know me as a co consumer, what I see here is like a um, a CEO going on about a, a poor developer that was just like saying, like, I don't think this is impressive. What are you doing? And attacking him. <laughs> Like, <laughs> using his entire company to, to uh, like, he, Shane here, he didn't make that video. Supposedly that developer did that he has on his team. Wouldn't you want the other, the other developer that seems to be <laughs> knowing what he is talking about to be on your side? Like, this is... Very strange. But we knew he couldn't walk the walk. And we called him out. They knew they're gonna they know they're gonna So you are like saying that this this uh dude here, like that are saying you're bad <sighs> This is not how you do PR <laughs> That he is a, a really bad programmer 
even though he has his own team developing his own game, like it's all looking like you're just throwing pies back and forth, and it's not a good look. Uh, now maybe Callum shouldn't like since he, I I think he owns the the company that is making uh, Nightmare World. Uh, maybe he shouldn't be doing this either. But, <laughs> you know, watching this video, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, get, I'm not ge getting any empathy for Shane. That's what I'm saying. I'm gonna get called out on it. Quite simply. If Callum was half as talented as his Okay, what, what did or, Callum actually say there? I didn't listen. They knew they're gonna, they know they're gonna get called out on it. Yeah. Quite simply. If Callum was half as talented as he's... And that is all you're gonna give us as an example of what Callum is doing? Man, don't you have, like, marketing people in your team? Didn't you talk to them before you did this? Says he is, he would never, ever have accepted... Didn't you, like, show them the video before you put it out? Like, the edited video? Didn't you show it to them, like, going... Is there is there parts that I should change? Because you should. That challenge, because he would have known how difficult it is. He soon worked out how difficult it really was to. Okay. So Shane here is claiming, like, when did Earth Two development start? Uh. Oh, I had the stupid PDF open and I closed it. Check out our PDF. Uh, here's the PDF. Oh, is it final now? Wait. Update final. Draft summary update final. <laughs> is it a draft or final version? We don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So somewhere in here, there's a roadmap. Uh, roadmap. So we should be able to see like um, they started in November 2020. They say here. Um, I don't know. First dev stream live on Twitch. So they like they have been at this project. Maybe not phase three developing i don't know when that supposedly starts does it say that on here because they they have this phase one thing where you could buy tiles and it, there seem to have been they seem to have put a lot of developing developing time into that and while they they put all the resources into that then maybe they didn't uh spend time on phase three that is going to be like this uh 3d world that is as big as earth and let me <laughs> so so the point is here that they have i mean when they come out and say like look at this they should have been working on it for a while uh, unless this is the first thing they did in case then what, why, why, why be so uh, spiteful towards anyone? You could just say, hey, we just started to, so yeah, <laughs> end of story. <laughs> but that's not what you do, no. Um, so he's saying here that Callum realized, uh, should have realized that what they have been making for like two years uh, cannot be done in a week. And I should hope so, <laughs> you know, because otherwise that's really a bad look. How long have you been developing for Shane? Why aren't you ever saying that? Like, really? To replicate, and that's when he started planning different points of attack. This really should have been something. How do you know that? Why are you saying that? If you are gonna claim that, then you're gonna have to show me some proof of that. Like, because what you did there, just now, makes me, like, you're saying Callum did this and this. 
if you're gonna claim what he did, you better show proof or I am not going to believe you. Same as if Callum said you're doing something and not showing proof of what you're doing, then I'm not gonna believe him. Simple, simple as that. Simple and straightforward. But I'm kind of glad that Callum's ego was so big that he accepted the challenge because it gives us this opportunity to really look at what Callum does and how he operates. And I think if you guys follow along... You are showing the world how you operate. <laughs> Did you ever think of that before you put this video out? And just digest this information. You'll find it interesting and entertaining at the same time. Because you could just go on the technical standpoint. Like, we're not interested in your personal vendetta against some individual. We're not interested in that. We're interested in the tech. Like I am, at least. So, like, when you start to attack someone's, like, like you just did there, when you start to say that a person did the challenge in a bad way, uh, it it doesn't come off very good. Like, I'm I'm not interested in how Callum was thinking while he did it. I I'm interested in what he produced. And I'm using Callum as an example here, but it's not only Callum that uses this strategy, it's many of the other YouTubers as well. And you may not think it's serious, but it starts to become serious when people who see the videos believe everything that they hear, and then they start sending... E yeah, that is why I'm only commenta commenting on you, Shane, on what you put out, because I want to give you the opportunity to tell me in a good way how great you are i want to give you the the voice because you, as you say you are attacked i want and and so far <laughs> okay we're only four minutes in uh this video is 45 minutes i don't know how i'm gonna get through this <laughs> but you know uh, he's so hostile and so uh, he's upsetting me. Recap. And let's go back and look where all of this started. Oh my goodness. The video that Callum created in response to our humble little devlog that we released a couple of weeks ago. I'm just going to straight up demystify what all of this means and show you that this is quite literally nothing source. It's literally standard. Okay, so what Callum says here, it's uh, what what you see here can be done by like using resources that we all have access to i don't know if that's true or not but that's what he said this is nothing source so it's kind of yeah and that is um like if that's true i i understand that chain gets that he feels threatened by that because if if that's true and callum says this <laughs> callum tells you that is it's nothing source and it's true and you want people to believe it is source yeah <laughs> that's a problem that you need to address somehow but you put you don't you don't do this. You you go to your marketing team, you go to your PR manager and you say, hey, this thing has happened. What do I do? And this is not, this is not what you do. Czar, that they're even pushing this as a feature. Th this whole video is essentially... You know, you know how you solve this problem that there's a developer out there going on about, um, going on about uh, your technology not being good enough you hire that person or you get into a, a cooperation with that person and say he came to us telling us that our things weren't as good as they could be we want to deliver the best thing that we possibly can so we we went and put our personal feelings aside 
and looked at how we could benefit from his knowledge. That's what you do. That's a good look. Hey. Them discovering the basics of any sort of composed world. They knew they're gonna they know they're gonna get called out on it. Quite simply. And you You've already shown me that beat bit. Why did you show me to me again? To find out that it's 10, 15, 20 year old technology from the game industry. Every game with a big world is using this. It's it's amateur hour. This isn't new. Yes. And uh, also, some of the bits in the challenge, it, it's like when you play World of Warcraft and you see that, and, and if you fly on a griffin, <laughs> you see uh, the landscape beneath you like blip into existence and stuff. Does that take away a big part of the immersion for you, or are you just thinking, well, the game is fun, I don't care about that? Like, of course, if it looked better, it would be cool. But is it really that important? Is it, the most important is to get a game working and have good mechanics for uh, good game mechanics are way more important than graphics. More and more uh, companies, like if you if you look at the games, some of the games that come out now. Like, if you look at The Sims 4, like, we... <laughs> if you look at Sims 3, it's... Um, the environment is very realistic, like, it's kind of realistic. And The Sims 4 is kind of a step back from that graphically. And that is because companies has discovered that, like, graphics are nice, but it's not everything. So, it's... It's stupid to have a fight about it. <laughs> There's a lot of problems in this video. In Minecraft, it is a color graded image. That color yeah, Minecraft is a really good example. <clears throat> like it's blocks and people are going nuts about it. Like if you run fast enough, you will see the chunks generating in front of you. Nobody cares. Literally nobody cares about that. They are like, this is how games work. We don't care. Chunks. So let's say you've got the world map, all the chunks in Minecraft. Let's say there's 32 chunks by 32 chunks. They have a 32 image by 32 image. And they colour each one of those pixels to indicate the biome that it is. Again, these are pretty much standard in all game engines. You can do these out of the box. 30 minutes maybe, set one up. Yeah. Note that he said that it takes 30 minutes to set a biome um, map up and nothing else. As someone who has recently implemented snow coverage into Nightmare World, I can tell you that they use it. And that's just about where the snow is. It's not about how it looks. In the same, the same implementation. I, I don't know what to say. There's nothing new here. They're just preying on the people that don't know these But uh, Callum is obviously saying this in response to something that we weren't allowed to see. So that's... no. I'm noting it. It's interesting and it's not a good look, Shane. Like, if you're gonna put someone's response to something in your video, you better put in what he was responding to. Otherwise, it's very hard to discern what he is actually talking about. Technical terms. And of course in this they also have like a panning cloud noise map moved into this height interpolation to just give it a nice sweeping fade. That's just to show this off to you guys. It's... It's kind of sad. But remember, the water they are the using level. proprietary software, which I interpret as they built their own engine. And if they built their own engine doing the same as Unity, I mean, Unity is a pretty great piece of software. So, uh, I mean, it, it is cool if the team is able to do that. It's cool. So. It's literally a height based linear interpolation as well. Yeah, I don't know what he Again, said there. Nothing based linear. It's kind of sad. Like, what is like it? The waterline level what is line? literally a height based linear interpolation as well. A height-based linear interpolation. Okay. 
Uh, I kind of understand what it what he said, but I have no idea how to do it. Well, again, nothing new. It, it... I assume it's like it's, um, when you have done it a bunch of times. I assume you go, yeah, that's what it is. Just a kind of trick of the eye to make it look more impressive than it is. You can get a demo twice, a demo level twice the size of this example with clip mapping already done for you on the Unreal Engine Marketplace or the Unity Asset Store. Okay. Shane, why did you put that in your video? Because now I'm gonna have to go and look for that uh, land. How do we search for it? Land escape. Oh look, it's a landscape ground pack that you can download. And uh, <laughs> okay, what is all this? Oh, oh, this is just pieces of, of land that you can put into your... Looks cool, right? But so this, this is available on, I'm on the Unity Asset Store right now. You could like buy this for $12 uh, to get this into your game. So visually, it's very similar. So, yeah, <laughs> point proven. Again, not new technology. Very available for even the smallest of indie mm. devs to take. Yeah, that's back. the point. Like, it's not revolutionary. It's cool that you have it in your game because if, like, if you're in a game and it looks like that, wouldn't you like it? Um, but you don't. You don't present it as groundbreaking. It's like. It's ground. And they do, <laughs> on a daily basis. Terrain-based height offset, height data, satellite height data. It, it, height mapping is... What are you saying? S satellite height data, what is that even? Satellites don't measure heights, do they? Built in to every do engine. They? I don't know, I haven't looked um, into that part. square kilometers is the number that most people seem to go with for their demo levels on the Unity Asset Store or the Unreal Asset Store. I'm not quite sure if this is just Shane trying to pull the wool over everyone's eyes or if the people he's hired to do this are pulling the wool over his eyes and he That is the impression that you get, like, uh, personally, I get that impression too. Like, does he actually believe that this is new? Does Shane actually believe it is new and he get feels attack? Or, I mean, that's, no, actually, like, he wouldn't, he wouldn't react like that if he actually thought it was new and someone came along and said, um, this isn't new. He, the reaction would be going up to the developer that told you it was new and said, hey, this guy is telling me that this is nothing new. What have you been working on the past year? <laughs> That's what you do. You don't put that on YouTube. You, you're silent on YouTube in that case. But if you knew that it was not new and were trying to present it as new, then you will get into defense mode when someone calls you out on it. This is why I said you go to your PR manager, public relations manager, you talk to them and ask them what should i do and they will tell you be quiet <laughs> most likely he's just none the wiser to the fact that this is nothing new genuinely it's nothing new you've been able to do this for a, a very long time i wanted this video to be more of a factual kind of rundown you know breakdown of what this is the only observable facts that we can discuss do not lend any credibility to them. I hope this has been informative to you, and I actually hope that this has been informative to a lot of the people who are invested in Earth 2, uh, and that they realise that this... Yeah. <clears throat> He's acting like a real developer right now. He, he thinks, here's information. People don't seem to have this information. I'm gonna give them the information. 
<laughs> you know why Stack Overflow exists? Because people, because developers are like, I have, I have, uh, I'm very fascinated by this response mechanism in myself, actually. When someone says, I don't know this stuff, it's like, it's like an OCD, you need to tell them. Like, even if you you spend all your work day telling someone else how to do their job and you do your job badly because of it, it's, it's still what you do. And in the end, the company benefits from it, of course, because... Uh, you know, now have more uh, knowledgeable stuff. But, but you might miss deadlines because you were explaining things to people. Um, that's what I do. Uh, actually, then I would work overtime to get that done because I realized that not what I was supposed to do. Anyway. <laughs> it's nothing at all. It's just readily available technology. I'm not sure how many of you have actually just gone and watched the five minute devlog that we released. But I haven't. If you did, you'd see in that devlog that we're really not doing anything out of the ordinary. We... Okay. Then why are you so worked up about him saying that? <laughs> just released a simple <laughs> devlog giving some progress update to our community. I had no... Okay. If he's gonna keep talking like that, like one word a second, then I'm gonna have to speed you up. I think 1.5 is good. Like he's talking, he's talking like this as if I don't understand what he's saying. It's very annoying. It's, don't talk down to me, please. Blow up into something so big. But Callum took that deadlock and You'll see how he misrepresented it to the people if you spend the time to just go and watch for yourself. And when I say it's nothing out of the ordinary, I mean Callum does this for his own game. His game that he's working on, he talks it up all the time. I'm honestly really proud to show it off to you guys. Oh, he was talking about doing devlogs is not uh, out of the ordinary. Yeah. No one has said that it's strange that he has devlogs. If you're gonna say that it's strange that people have said that, then you better show me proof of it the team he world doesn't are some of the most passionate developers artists sound effects people and back-end developers i see a very very bright future for both the game and the team behind it this game by the way uh it the graphics aren't great uh but i kind of want to play it <laughs> i want to see what it is look here this little staircase there uh inspired this over the us can help manage it but we have to build it for those of you that haven't met your technical jargon quota of the day, it's a front end of Next.js, which is a framework for React and will be what's running our website. And a back end of Golang with a Postgres database behaving as a master over our account system, all running in Docker container instances for easy server replication. Which is fine. Cool. Fine. There's no issue with that. But it's really odd for a talented developer to have this urge to jump on and criticize other people's work. I mean, why not just focus on your own thing and let everybody do what they're doing? We're all trying to... If you don't want people to focus on your stuff, then don't put it on YouTube. <laughs> if Why would you put something on YouTube and then go upset when people focus on it? Don't you want fo focus? Don't you want uh, attention? Like, isn't that why you put things on YouTube? Build stuff and be creative. I mean, why do you have to be so hostile? About Again, go talk to your public relations manager. He will have to, t uh, or she, uh, will tell you one or two things about public relations. And, and please, like, well, yeah. Let's start looking at the challenge. Throughout this challenge, Callum has convinced people that I've moved the goalpost time and time again. And this fits in perfect with his narrative and perfect with what he wants to do. I don't care. Achieve. Ironically, we have irrefutable evidence. I don't care what, what was going on on Twitter during the challenge. Show me what he has done. That's, I'm, I'm bored yes, of you now. Like, in fact the one stop who, with your and I'm assuming stupid personal However, vendetta about this person. This was going to be. One thing that Alan has said in his video, that he was sleeping at the time he was challenged. And he who cares? Like he didn't really see much about the challenge until sometime later. This doesn't matter. In that day or evening or whatever time it was for him. For starters, he claimed I'd already lost 30 minutes into the seven day period. Which, funny enough. Well, um, that bit 
regardless if Callum is claiming to be asleep here, it doesn't matter. Like, if you're gonna give someone a seven day challenge, and then after 30 minutes saying you've lost, then that's bad on you, regardless if this guy was claiming to be asleep when he wasn't. That doesn't matter. At that time, I was still asleep. I hadn't even known that a challenge was issued. So doesn't disqualifying matter. me in 30 minutes is pretty funny. This is incorrect, and we can prove this, and it doesn't have anything to do with- No, can you prove that you didn't say that? Whether that challenge was because successful or not? I just want- At this point, just get, get on with it. To look at this, because it's quite interesting. If you catch somebody lying about one thing, it's quite often that they're lying about a lot of other things. About that bit. That bit. Because... Somebody lying about one thing? I just wanted to look at this because it's quite interesting. So it's 10.32 in. I'm, gonna... I'm, I'm just gonna put 10.32. That's my entire comment. If you catch somebody lying about one thing, it's quite often that they're lying about a lot of other things. But and as, as you can see, I have watched this before, as I said, uh, and I have uh, made comments. And this bit here, I, I actually got uh, <laughs> a person on Twitter was very angry that I put this here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, all hail the Shadow Cabal. <laughs> I don't know. About 15 but, but, but you, you know, it is. Like, this is YouTube drama. And this video, uh, he has 1,000 subscribers, we can see here. And he has 1.6 thousand comments on this video. Where can I see the view count? Uh, am I, I, got, I went temporarily blind and can't see the view count right now. Why? <laughs> Where did it go? Uh, YouTube had like hidden the dislike number. It's very strange. They were. St oh, here it is. It's fourteen thousand views now. YouTube drama is lucrative. People want to see YouTube drama. You don't win by being part of it. Minutes, 20 minutes after I made the tweet. Oh, but challenging him. if he has uh, monetized his, shall, uh, his channel, which I doubt he has, uh, because you need well, he has a thousand, uh, he might have been able to do that now. You need a thousand subscribers and you need something rather views over the last month, so he might have been able to monetize his channel now, and he uh, he might be able to make some money now not a lot not as much as selling tiles so i don't really he responded saying oh, get ready to swipe that card <laughs> who the fuck cares uh, i mean what does it matter it doesn't matter that's not why we're here is it is it why you're here i'm i'm not i don't care about this like Okay, so he, he uh, challenged Callum and he uh, responded quickly to the tweet, not to the YouTube thingy. So, whatever. My hypothesis is that he saw this challenge, he thought it's going to be easy, and he agreed to it before even checking what the requirements were. That is setting himself up for an absolute disaster. So, Callum started... No, it, himself is, no, it is not. You know, you know what would have happened if the challenge was actually too hard and if you actually know what you're doing in public relations, you go, wow, I can do this and here's why. Here's the challenges I met and uh, here's why I don't believe <laughs> that Earth 2 did it either. You can't lose. <laughs> so it's, it, issuing the challenge was so stupid. Before the challenge even started and as things progressed further and further he became more desperate to find ways out of this situation no. that he just got himself into by accepting a challenge where you didn't even No. admitting that you cannot do something publicly it shows character 
so you can no he he wasn't ashamed or anything maybe oh i don't know cal maybe he would like not understand this part but there, there's a chance that he he knows what I had said, so. When we understand what the requirements were, if you look at Callum's response video. But, and Shane shouldn't assume. It's, it's a bad look to assume. You'll notice that he intentionally only uses a very small segment of the challenge video that I made to him. And he did this intentionally because he knew if he added the requirements that I spoke in my. Okay, then, then show me what he did in regards to your requirements and just tell me when he lost you're 12 minutes in and you haven't started yet video challenge him come on that it would immediately discredit the results of the challenge that he provided and that he says was successful let's take a look at what i actually said in the challenge because that's the source of truth yeah this is the thing that most let's... people have never seen before or most of the people who are actually supporting Callum behind this challenge why no, no. would most people not have seen this that of course you go and sh watch the video to see like if there's trickery why why do you assume we haven't seen this why 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 why, <laughs> why? <laughs> That's, that, that is actually insulting your audience and you shouldn't do it you create a world or a terrain which is 774,000 meters by 770 oh here's the the rules conveniently conveniently shown on the screen screen <laughs> screen note please that the word earth is not here unless i'm missing it it's not right the the word earth is not on this screen shane why would why would you only show this part of the challenge 74,000 meters. Not only did I speak the And that might ch sound strange, but you'll see. Like, because surely this is, this is the entire challenge, right? Surely this is what you meant for, uh, for Callum and everyone to see and say, yeah, this is the, the challenge. This is what he has to do and nothing else. Surely. Or do you want to add to this? Do you want to add to this? Let's see what he says. 774,000 meters by 774,000 meters. Not only did I speak these details to Callum in the challenge, if you check the YouTube video, you'll also see that ah, a very here it comes. Here it comes. Uh, and there has been debate, and by that I mean I was asking and people uh, talked to me, but they couldn't put. Um, they, they couldn't give me, uh, no one gave me a video and a timestamp where this bit here was shown um, around the, the 23rd of March, um, which made me doubt if, if it was there at the beginning of the challenge. But uh, Josh Drive Hayes actually included a video in his video responding to this. Uh, with this bit in, oh, and that was posted on the 24th of March, so uh, I am now assuming it was in. However, it's very sneaky to have like, here's the requirements and have a numbered list and then have a text above it and only in the text above it uh, you mention that it needs to be Earth. Um, so... I don't, I mean, technically it was there. So, so my opinion is that if Callum, if I don't even know actually, but if Callum didn't replicate the real earth height map data, then Shane technically don't, doesn't have to pay him because he didn't meet the requirements. That's, I mean, it says challenge details up here and it, it states that it needs to be a replica of Earth. Um, so technically, you know, he, he doesn't ha have to pay. However, it's, I mean, if, if I, 
if I was the one that has issued the challenge and the person that did it only did the numbered list that I put um, and I was going to give the money away anyway and and what was presented was what Callum presented which is like I would say close enough I would say publicly like I didn't I don't think you actually met all the requirements here's what you missed but this was such a good effort that here's the money just because of public relations <laughs> because and also to be nice because uh Callum actually proved that he could do a lot even if he didn't do everything what he did was pretty impressive in my opinion and I, if I had issued the challenge I would reward that because it, I, w I was going to give the money away anyway the requirements for the challenge and I mean as a diligent programmer accepting a challenge, why wouldn't you go around looking for the details of the challenge on the video that initiated? Because it's misleading, Shane. Because it's misleading. You have a numbered list, of course, you in a long text, which uh, starts with a long background text. Of course, we're gonna just look at this, and we have a time limit, so uh, it's it's a lot that you're asking. So we're a bit stressed. So we miss things. There's nothing sinister about that. It's just... Challenge in the first place. And just probably Callum missed that part. Or or he didn't and thought, well, it's... I mean, how it, how it is worded here, it's like, here are the key requirements. So you might think that this part is just uh, like examples that they're giving. Like in this point down... Uh, here in number five, you need to be able to have the same detail achievable on every, any point of the world. And then it says, we used a location in British Columbia, Canada, but our tech works the same for any place in the world. So, um, this bit, you, we only see as an example, like they, and uh, it's not really a requirement, it's just, here's here's what we did, but this is what you do. It's, it's, it's badly worded. And I think he adds words to this later because I feel like it said more later, but I don't of the remember. On the video we'll see. Initiated the challenge in the first place. And just to show you what an absolute circus this really is, yeah, it YouTube is a circus. That is what it is. On the YouTube videos. You know, and just because you're not the freak in the in the middle of the circus doesn't mean that you have a good look when you're showing it off. <laughs> is that reflecting to me too? Uh, shouldn't I be doing that? Well, pondering life choices. They've made to attack the whole challenge in general. As you can see right here. $10,000 challenge for a seven day build in which Cal Oh, by the way, if anyone is wondering why I do this, I think it's fun. <laughs> That's And I hope to learn a bit. I mean, uh when I did this uh with this code here, um I learned stuff and I I I saw it as a, a just challenge not to prove it to somebody else, but as uh well, to be able to say that the thing I said about it being easy <laughs> to kind of prove that I wasn't lying uh, but also to like I might be able to use this for other projects so um, that's I hope to learn Callum Upton would have to recreate not what the devlog had shown no 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 but what Shane Isaac claimed it had been made with Callum accepted good on him and why would you put that bit in the video Shane doesn't look good to you for you either because now you have someone saying that uh, you have not shown in your devlog that you can do all these seven steps so now I want to see you do them Busty Entertainment began and everyone who's been watching this document <coughs> for any significant period of time because Earth 2 has persisted long before this got really excited you may not think all of this is important but it's beyond important 
and it really starts to show when you put these next to each other. So let's first have a look at the transcript of what I spoke in the... See here, he had, so you have to do that too. It wasn't in the description. Uh, Challenge nitpicking. The text and get that onto the screen now. Next, let's look at the list of details from the YouTube video that his YouTube buddies posted. And now, let's look at the details of the challenge that Callum decided to share on his video response. Shane went on to give a list of seven requirements that I have to meet. One, create a world with seven hundred. Also, this doesn't matter uh, if if uh, Callum. <clears throat> use the wrong uh, description uh, or the the wrong transcript and that's why he failed don't you think that's embarrassing shane the, i i mean if the only reason sh callum failed the challenge uh is because he was looking at the wrong transcript of the video um then what does that say to everyone? It kind of says he could have done the right thing if he wasn't misled by his YouTube buddies. And that was the whole point of the challenge, right? To, to show that he couldn't. 74,000 meters. Moving goalposts. Isn't it funny how when someone is guilty of doing something themselves, they often accuse other people of doing what, what are you going about now, go mowing gold? I'm not a rocket scientist, but you tell me why, in Callum's response video to the challenge, why would he reference a list of rules created by a third party as opposed to listing the rules? Because it's easy, because it looks nice, because it's a YouTube video, and you want to have a nice set of rules, and you didn't provide that, probably, or, or you did, I don't know. He, this is just the visual uh, he he chose to use his his friends he, he callum trusted his friend to have correctly shown the challenge rules and he showed that on his youtube video end of story rules directly from the source of truth the it doesn't matter shane set out by the person who actually issued the challenge why would he do this so he could once again yeah okay so and then he highlight, highlights number five because when you as a tech person read this bit you read you need to be able to have the same level of detail achievable on any point of the world and that seems like that is what you need to do and then it's like for example so uh, for showing the, the rules purposes the example is not important to show like our tech works the same way for any place in the world just like you said up here it's redundant it's the same information twice you don't have to so you have to do that too is not technically a requirement i mean you we already know we have to do it. so you you can that's why any sensible person would remove this bit when showing it, like, here's the rules. You want to have as, as short of a text as possible. That's why. That's that's the whole reason. Mislead people into thinking he completed the challenge and trick his followers into spending their valuable time. Like, you mentioning British Columbia is just confusing, to be honest. You, you, you worded it poorly. Ending up for him and flooding into our chats and social media, screaming that he should be paid because he won the challenge. I really love this poster, by the way. Uh, I am conflicted about the fact that he's smoking, but it's a really cool picture. And I like the text, like I could either watch it happen or be a part of it. Uh, that's inspiring. And I, I, I want at least that text somewhere. <laughs> Now, the oh, oh, I can have that text. I can. I'm just gonna put it on a pink post it. Oh, I can't because my pen is not working. But I can I can do it later. <laughs> he did this is either absolute incompetency or intentional misguidance and negligence. As many of Callum's followers... Okay, so now we are uh, almost 16 minutes in and you haven't started showing Callum's 
presented things yet. He's a genius. There can only really be one answer here. It's not incompetency. He did it intentionally, and he did it to mislead the very followers that trust every word that he says. I personally find this really insulting for these followers because if there's one thing that I've learned over the past few days, just dropping into our Discord and looking at some of the chat that's occurred between Earth 2 supporters and Calum supporters, I've seen that a lot of Calum supporters are real devs and they are really intelligent and they have some really good. Don't you find that kind of um, worrying? That you have one side of like investors that are saying you are legit and then the other side is comprised of is that a word well the other side is devs like is, isn't that worrying to you <laughs> like the investors say you're right the devs say you're wrong isn't that kind of worrying to you i would be very worried if if i had that case on my hands interesting valid points some of them have actually spent hours in there protecting callum and standing up for him i really feel that it is insane. well i don't care about callum i don't know this guy i don't i just want to know chain what are you doing uh i i'm sure callum is a nice guy but i don't know him <sighs> chain what are you putting on the screen right now? What are you doing? Come on, grow up. Like you're, <laughs> you are proving to everybody that you issued a seven days challenge. And after 24 hours, you felt the need to, to tell everybody that he hasn't done it in 24 hours. It was a seven day challenge. You're not supposed to be done in 24 hours. Like if even if Callum had done it in 24 hours, he would spend the rest of the time polishing, making it look better. Right? Because he gave him seven days. Like, I haven't even read this, but I, I only read this part and went, what, what a complete asshole. <laughs> Oh, I'm not supposed to call him an asshole, but you know, this, this tweet is not being nice. Like uh, it's not being fair. It's what does it actually say? So it's coming to 24 hours of the seven day challenge. Why would you have seen any result? I guess a 20 minute claim to put one of the components up. It's well and truly disproved now. How? How is it this proof that he couldn't put one of the components up in 30 minutes when there were seven rules and he has seven days? This challenge was for Callum alone, not with the help of other Jebs. Do you have proof that he, he has other Jebs or what? You pissed me off with the first sentence. <laughs> so, so <laughs> what are you doing? And why would you show this in your video? This is embarrassing. You should be hiding this. You should be deleting this tweet and not showing it to anyone. Oh, seems he is already getting help. How? Do you approve of this? Uh, so pointing out 10 devs times 7 days is 70 collective dev days. Uh... Yeah, unless they want a weekend off. 1680 hours, so much for 30 minutes. Shane, I'm, gonna, I'm just, I'm just going to uh, check uh, what it's like to be working in your company. You would expect uh, 10, 10 devs to work, unless you mean 11 devs. Okay, I'm, I'm going to give you the benefit of a doubt and say you mean um, you mean Callum plus 10 devs, which is 11 devs. So you are saying they have 680 hours in one week. So divided by 7. And divided by 11. So you are expecting your devs to work for over 21 hours a day, seven days a week. I do not want to work for you. Let's now take a look at the response that Callum provided to the challenge. 
I find this part very interesting because a normal Callum would have his video playing and he would be- <laughs> I find it very funny that he put that tweet up. Like nothing in that tweet did not piss me off. <laughs> Why? Why would you put that up? You're saying you love devs? Look at how you're treating them. Explaining the processes and the steps that he took to recreate this world and show everybody how absolutely simple it really is. He opted not to do this. Instead, he went for comical satire. You See what you did that now? I haven't heard a word you said because I'm still p pissed off at that tweet. I'm not gonna listen to you. Oh, oh, so you, we have actually entered into Callum's results now. Okay, okay, finally. <sighs> that sure took a long time, like over 16 minutes. Okay. This part very interesting because yeah, this is the interesting part, Shane. <laughs> this is what we are here for. What did he do in seven days? <sighs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to, uh, to comment on this whole video. So let's just see how far we get. Um, okay, so this, this is what Callum did in seven days. So far, it's a nice landscape. And I'm watching the horizon because it, apparently it's a big deal if it's popping or not. And he would be explaining the processes and the steps that he took to recreate this world and show everybody how. Yeah, I saw some art artifacts over here. Who cares in a game? If I was in this game, I would not be staring at the horizon. I would be looking like over here. Uh, so, so uh, you having a measuring contest about who can make this bit over here that is like not in the focus area of a human being is so weird. Be explaining the processes and the yeah, okay, so that it popped. Okay. Steps that he took to recreate this world and show everybody how absolutely simple it really is. He opted not to do this. Instead, he went for comical satire, using one of his friends to do a voiceover that further Of course he would. This is an entertainment thing. Like, he is on YouTube, where you in entertain people. Of course he did a comical satire voiceover. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> like, it's fun. You know why devs make ga games at all? Like, you know why we started making games in like in the before time? You know why anyone made Pong? It's because it's fun. The whole earthy concept. Most game engines, we've simply made it bigger and are not going to elaborate any further because that might actually be impressive. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. He believes he did this to take the attention away of what he actually delivered in his product. So once you, you think, okay, but. Why are you commenting on it? Why are you taking attention away from it? Like, I'm on your channel now. You don't have to include that part. Why are you so salty? difficult to use real world hype map data to do what we were demoing in our devlog number one for Earth 2. He had to come up with another plan. Callum's biggest argument against successfully completing this. Now, see, that's where you just. That's that's actually where you you have already shown that it has to be real height data for the actual Earth, so this is where you just uh, explain why uh, this produced product from Callum did not. You show me this. You show me why he didn't do that, and yeah, stop, stop going off on tangents about like uh, your theories about why he did what he did you just show me the technical things the challenge is that he claims he didn't understand that he had to create this world based on the planet earth yeah maybe he didn't maybe he did who cares before i go any further i have to point out we are called earth 2 yep you are but in the seven points, as I pointed out, uh, I'm not. You didn't write Earth even once. You thought it was like obviously understood, but then uh, you wrote it uh, above the seven points. So, I mean, it, it is debatable if you were trying to mislead him or not. It's maybe you weren't. Maybe you were. 
but here we are. I mean, Earth. It's actually in our name. We're not called random. Yeah, but you being called Earth too doesn't mean that when you issue a challenge to to a, a developer to recreate part of the tech, and you're saying that the the map has to be 700 something square kilometers i mean the the earth is not a square it's a globe so you have it right in, there in the first rule that uh, you're not expecting the entire earth <laughs> so world two or procedurally generated plugins world two or e random also note here in his own video it says built on top of Mac bo map box technology where Earth 2 and obviously the most difficult thing for us when creating the first version of a, an actual one-to-one -one scale digital replica I don't know why that is so important but that it kept it keeps being mentioned of the planet Earth that loads performantly and allows the user to stream it almost instantly from any location in the world to any other location in the world is exactly that that yeah, we know what you are doing. Knows this and everyone knows this. Yes, Helen we do. Why are you reiterating? I'm saying that what they're trying to do on the grand scale is not possible currently. And Callum says here that it's not possible to do the entire Earth like they are saying. So what Callum is doing there is saying that it would be impressive if you actually pull, pull this off. And potentially by the looks of it and the advancements in technology, um, not for the you know not in the near future. And uh, and if you're claiming to do something cool that no one has ever done before, then people are going to be uh, like either praising your existence and buying into what you are saying and throwing money at you. Or are they going to be like, are you really going to be able to do this? Question mark. That, that's the only two stances you can be able to take over that. So we ask the question, why would Callum decide to remove the direct reference to British Columbia in Canada? Because of the things I already stated. In the list of requirements that he provided in his response, this is specifically on the... You're so hung up about that. Just realize you worded it poorly and move on it doesn't matter it doesn't matter because uh it rule number five yeah it doesn't matter if you're if if you truly think that the text above the challenge is part of the challenge then how point number five is worded does not matter why because that's a lot easier to achieve which i'm sure no it, there's no difference here. Okay, but I've already stated that multiple times. I'm not going to Before do it again. Out first hand after accusing us of having a nothing source project. You can create an atmosphere by drag and drop. They had a lot of game devs, uh, a lot of game artists looking at this for what it is. Nothing source, basic engine features. Ladies and gents, I, I hope this has been informative to you. And I actually hope that this has been informative to a lot of the people who are invested in Earth 2. Uh, and they realize that this Isn't that is this the second part of time you showed me this? Why are you showing me By that again? The earth element, this all becomes very easy. Most developers know this. You can buy plugins that create procedurally generated worlds. It's not difficult. Callum spent. Yeah. No. Um, procedurally generating something and have going off of that or having a file and going off of that see actually i would i would think that it's easier to go off the file because then you don't have to code a procedurally generating procedural generation you don't have, co have to code that if you can just use the file so use the file that I need more explanation about why why anyone would spend time on procedural generation, which is cool. Procedural generation is cool. <laughs> I think I think that's cool. But why would you spend time on doing that uh, instead of just using a file that is like pre-made? I I don't understand. Over 27 minutes criticizing our devlog number one, where we clearly stated that we are using real world.
This kind of looks like it could be Spain, if this is Africa. Uh, but the the water level is too high. Hype map data to display the visuals in the video. So it's hard to tell, but you know, do you have proof that this isn't Earth, just with a different water level? Because this actually, to me, this looks like Africa and this looks like Europe, but with the water level way, way raised. So, and uh, the biomes are wrong. Uh, but in the Earth 2 video, they are throw <laughs> they changed the, the biomes and that was part of the challenge show so that's not a proof that it's not earth it will not only support real-time photorealistic terrain and environment rendering on a large scale but also accurately reflect our real world's topology and locations actually r recognizing a bit of land like like from a picture like this is actually really difficult <laughs> <laughs> because it's so zoomed in. And also, what is this line over here? In order to achieve this, we've developed a high-performance proprietary rendering... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, because this is not a globe. It's a square. See? <laughs> Why do they have a square? ...pipeline that integrates both height map data with clip mapping. And it's something we've been looking to enhance... Yeah, because it's difficult to do it on a ball. It's easier to do it on a square, I guess. And we call Talent out, pointing out how difficult this really is. But when we release an update on a proprietary tech that I know my developers have worked very hard to build, and then someone takes that video footage and intentionally misleads thousands of people, including some from our community, Callum's argument starts to take another bad turn when he first-hand referenced in his own video response that he reached out to me asking which part of British Columbia... Yeah, because that's in the beginning of the challenge when you're trying to plan out what you're going to do. And he wanted to use the same area so that he could prove it more easily that <clears throat> this is the earth. So far, I haven't heard him say that it was not the earth. So how do we know? Canada that we used in our demo. I actually reached out to Shane asking for the coordinates of the area shown in his devlog so that I could use the exact same area in. Now, an interesting point here is, <clears throat> did Shane answer? D did you give the co coordinates to Callum? Because if you did and he didn't use them, that's interesting. Can you prove that you did give him them? My video. But of course he didn't reply. Why would Callum... Mm, Callum states that Shane did not reply and give him the coordinates. Is that true or not? reach out and ask to me which part of British Columbia but of course Shane is not co uh, focusing on that part he's not sh focusing on I didn't reply because no no he is going on why would you do that we used in our demo if Callum didn't understand that his world needed to be based he wanted on to recreate your video Shane originally intended to create his world on the planet earth but soon after he started to research because if he had the co coordinates and if he was showing like the same area it would be uh, way easier to compare so but how this could be possible he realized it's extremely difficult and way out of his league no. <sighs> there you go again assuming things nothing source. nothing source this is nothing source so there's nothing new here not new technology genuinely it's nothing new again nothing new okay he decided to keep quiet and not ask any more questions about real world locations yeah, because it was probably working on his company and on the challenge. And change his plan of attack. And, like, if he's anything like me, if you ask one question and you don't get a reply, you you keep waiting for that reply to, to come. You don't ask more questions because it it's pointless to ask more questions if you're not getting replies. You're not having a conversation. You... <laughs> Like, that's how I work. I ask something, I have more questions, but I'm going to post them as soon as you reply to the first question, because I don't want to overwhelm you. Like, this one question was obviously very hard for you to reply to, so 
created real Earth 3, but he creates random Earth 3 and trick everybody into thinking that it was an actual replication of the planet Earth. When we reviewed Callum's Earth 3 video, we were trying to work out which country he was displaying. Right. Done. Done. And you did it without Shane's proprietary tech. Yeah, because it's not. There you go. I literally use Mapbox. Yeah, because it's not. There you go. I literally use Mapbox. I literally use Mapbox. I literally use Mapbox. See? See? Why? Shane. Yeah. Okay, so now you're going on about, you're, you're looping that Callum used Mapbox, okay, as if that is somehow wrong to do. I, ex I expect an explanation. Why is it wrong to use Mapbox? I literally use Mapbox. We reached out to Callum when he was on a stream and he told us he didn't know which country he was displaying. We found this very odd and then worked out. Here's Google Earth. Why is it loading for so long? Okay, here's, here's a piece of land. Uh, can I sh hide all the names? P pretend all the names are not here. Look how cool this looks. Look how it's uh, 3D. Look that it has a uh, very detailed texture. Like, uh, look at this. It's 3D. It's using height map data. It's... Uh, it's making me having trouble navigating. It's very impressive. Look at the detail. It's the, this level of detail, by the way, is the same uh, no matter where on the earth you go. There we go. There's the whole earth. Now, what country was I displaying without looking at the names? Oh, I don't know. Because it, that, that was not what I was like trying to accomplish but since we have Google Earth here we can try to find why is it so difficult to navigate in this uh, so now I can change the water label but if you look at it like this uh, and you have the Gibraltar over here doesn't this kind of look like the, what the Earth 3 video looked like? That's what I think. It, like, it could have been. You changed the biomes out because uh, what, part of the cha challenges, challenge was, if, I not, if I'm not uh, mistaken, to change the biomes. So like this doesn't have to be desert and this doesn't have to be green. It could be snow over here just saying that when you zoom in on something yet that you made and you're not paying attention to um, where you're going then you might not know where you are like if if, if i go over here like I, i'm no expert at geography i don't know what country i'm in now it's like somewhere around nasha or something afghanistan uh, okay, like if I don't have these labels here, I would never have known what country was there. I don't know where things are on the earth. That's not proof of anything. The peace procedural world had absolutely nothing to do with real world height map data. What How do you know? Callum provided was a world that kind of looks like Earth but has nothing to do with Earth. Do you wonder How do you why know? I gave seven requirements to Callum to fulfill this challenge? No, Shane, why did you? Why did you do that? Why did you issue a challenge to a YouTuber? Why? I didn't give one or two. I gave seven because all seven working together is extremely difficult. Impressive. Yes, we issued the challenge to Callum, but Callum accepted it. So he needs to take responsibility for... Doing... How many fingers to him? Okay, doing seven is really extremely difficult. Like how many, how many of them do you need to take away be before it's not impressive anymore? 
Um, like, I'm I'm impressed. To completing the challenge, if he expects his ten thousand dollars, and with ten thousand dollars on the line, you would expect he would be very careful and articulate to make sure he follows the requirements that were set by myself. <laughs> yeah, you already said that. Even if we ignore that additional detail that clearly says this needs to be based on the real world and real world hard map data. Yeah, because it's what? There are we able to discard this requirement now? Because I think it's it's going to be uh, impressive without it. You got literally use map box. And even if we ignore the clear statement. Well, if you use map box, doesn't it that sort of imply that like, what is map box? Maps and locations for developers. Stop mapping for free. What is it? Oh my goodness. I don't want to do that. I just want to read about it right now. I might actually download this later. Mapbox provide powerful routing and accurate traffic power. I mean, I don't think that Mapbox has a version that is procedurally generated. Does it? So what you're showing me is that Callum used the technology that gives you data for the actual Earth and then proceed to state that he didn't? That... it doesn't make any sense. Before the challenge was issued to Callum and before the requirements were laid out that says that this has to be similar or better than the demo that we provided. What? What did you just say? We ignored the clear statement before the challenge was issued to Callum, and before the requirements were laid out that... Yeah, we can ignore things said before the challenge was laid out, because it's not part of the challenge. Yes, that this has to be similar or better than the demo that we provided. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no. Where? Show, show me, show me where it says that. Even taking those out of the equation and looking here at number five alone, that he had... You need to be able to have the same level of detail achievable on any point of the world. Yeah, doesn't he? Has intentionally changed to suit his purpose in this challenge? I don't know how long we're gonna argue about this. Like, language is hard. Words are hard. And, like, this reads as any point of the world will have the same detail. Like I did in my little paint experiment that's all it says there to me someone else might read it diff differently but there's nothing sinister about reading this as any point of the world should look the same as any other point of the world in what you create there's nothing sinister about that that's just how i read it he is immediately disqualified he has not used real world height map data Again, um, are you sure? Are you sure he didn't really use use real height map data? Are you really sure about that? He has. Wait. How, how, how is it laid out on that image? I want to compare. Oh, it's not, it, it looks nothing like it. Um, so it might not be this point. Probably not. Uh, it looks way different. But maybe if I zoom in. No. No, it's not the same. But you know that it, prove that he hasn't Used height. <sighs> Prove it or don't keep mentioning it. Just like it's uh, okay. So you have you you are stating that you haven't seen proof that Mapbox actually provides real height map da data. Okay, and that may Therefore, very well be but but you are using height map box so are you <laughs> like, i don't know of this entire challenge 
to recreate a very large section of the planet Earth in seven days using the same quality and the same way or better that we showed in our video. He has completely ignored this in number five and unfortunately fails. We believe this clear, irrefutable evidence obviously disqualifies him completely from the challenge. Cal it's it's very like stop focusing on this part because uh, if if Callum created an entire globe of another landscape, it's still impressive to other people. Stop focusing on this and Callum move on to something else, something other. Very little work that he claimed was required to create our demo video. Again, these are pretty much standard in all game engines. You can do these out of the box. 30 minutes maybe, set one up. 30 minutes maybe, set one up. Yeah, that's disingenuous or like dishonest to just use that part of the argument, not taking into account what he was talking about. He was talking about setting up a bio changer thingy, not the actual landscape. So it doesn't apply here. Instead of delivering the challenge, he decided to deceive people and make people think that he and then um, I, I need to have somebody lying about one thing it's quite often that they're lying about a lot of other things so, so Shane you being dishonest and, and uh, showing us that part of Callum saying it takes 30 minutes maybe to put up a biome changer and pretending it's like he's saying like it's 30 minutes to create your entire project If you catch somebody lying about one thing, it's quite often that they're lying about a lot of other things. But That's all I have to say about that. He won the challenge when he knew this wasn't the case. Even though he failed on number five, out of interest, let's look at some of the other six requirements just for fun. Requirement number one. Well, we don't know if this one's true. He's showing us Random World 3, so we have nothing to reference back in the real world. You create a world or a terrain with 774 meters by 774 meters. Didn't you see when he zoomed out and it was a globe? Don't you think that if this is the level of detail and these are bushes that these meters requirements are met? And also if it's hard to, to know, then why are you refuting it? And again, we really expected Callum to show some steps and prove what he was doing was accurate. I mean, there's ten thousand dollars here on the line for him, so if he would... yeah, uh, I don't think that Callum ever expected to get that money. Kind of when when a flat earther gives you gives you a challenge, you don't expect to get it. You just do the challenge just to, <laughs> to show your followers what you can do. Um, so I I don't know why Shane brings that up all the time. Doing the right thing, I'm sure he would have proved it without any reasonable doubt. Requirement number two. It does seem like he's using clip mapping in some places. So congratulations there, Callum, and we will give you a big tick against this one. I just he used clip mapping. Okay, awesome. I don't know what these squares are supposed to be, uh, but. Probably it says somewhere here on the screen. I don't know. I just want to take this opportunity to say I'm not against plugins at all. The developers who create plugins are extremely talented. They huh? deserve much more praise than they receive. They create purpose-built solutions. Oh, hi, Fre French guy. Uh, yeah, it's like they assume. I assume that you put these squares on here to... Uh, to show you like the scale or something that help other devs quickly solve issues that would otherwise need to be solved themselves this saves them a lot of time and allows them to focus on their game and create other interesting unique types of gameplay and of course if there were a plugin that solved the issue earth 2 needed to solve at the precision and detail that we needed for the planet earth don't you think we would have just used that plugin no, because you're using proprietary software and you you have built your own engine, so you can't, <laughs> right? The first thing our developers did was research all the existing plugins to see whether or not we could leverage any of plugins to what, Shane? The ingenious developers who had created something in the past. This type of plugin. Well, of course you did. Like the 
the first thing you're gonna do when you're gonna do a, a project of this scale is making sure you use the right engine. Are you going to, to make... Video sound is a little low. Oh, thank you for telling me. Uh, I will raise it a little bit. What was I saying now? Uh, plugins, yeah. Uh, you will research what engine you're, you're going to use. And uh, Shane here is uh, claiming that he's pr using proprietary software, not the Unity engine. So he's not using the Unity engine, he says. Exist, and that's why we knew so he can't use plugins. A plugin that out of the box to recreate. Yeah, so they uh, discovered that the Unity engine was not good enough, they're going to build their own. Okay. Areas of the planet Earth I don't know what claimed. went into Our the decision. To work decision. On proprietary tech. And that's why we claim that we're using proprietary tech. So they bought satellites, photos, and made Earth. No, they're using Mapbox. Uh, they are. It says so. This is the first. <laughs> this is the, the start page of their website. They're using Mapbox. So, and Callum says he did too. So, who knows? In our videos, because that's what we're I don't know. If that, is, does that come from satellites? I haven't uh, looked into Mapbox before this, like at all, but it's here. It's precise location data and powerful developer tools to change the way we navigate the world. By which I assume they mean the Earth, the current Earth. <laughs> Not Earth 2 or Earth 3 or a random generator world, so who knows? A tick for requirement 2. Let's go on to requirement 3. Again, he changed requirement 5, so it would cause requirement 3 to look just like any base height map with 32 meters. He didn't change requirement 5. You, you worded it poorly. What was requirement 3? You utilize a base map base height map with 32 meter sample distance any other map spanning over the whole terrain is not allowed no cheating <laughs> it's, it's funny that Shane thinks he needs to put no cheating into the requirements um, any other map spanning over the whole terrain is not allowed why not this is this is just confusing no global color map no global normal map, no curvature map. We haven't used any of those. We worked all of this out using our own tech based on height map data alone. Doesn't <laughs> it doesn't really make any sense. Um, when you're making a game, you you use the best, you, the the easiest way. Like it doesn't matter if you use your own tech or not, really, to to the player. The data is taken from open data sources such as OpenStreetMap and NASA and from purchased proprietary data sources such as Digital Globe. Okay, so it is satellite data then. Okay. So it would cause requirement 3 to look just like any base height map with 32 meter sample That's what Mapbox is, yeah. He didn't real world height map data because he figured out that was difficult and the reason he conveniently changed or moved the goalpost on requirement 5. And even though he didn't use real world height map data on requirement 3, from the looks of his plugin choice, it just creates a randomly generated world, at best with a low resolution guide height map that would never be enough to actually span our entire world with 32 meter sample. Um. Distance anyway. So requirement 3 is a little bit amusing. 32 meter resolution guide height map that would never be enough to actually span our entire world with 32 meter sample distance anyway. So requirement 3 is a little bit... Well, it obviously is enough to span his globe that he did. Amusing. It obviously fails because... And even if... Even if he didn't, he didn't use like the entire, entire Earth surface, then if he wrapped a bit of the Earth around a globe, it's still impressive. Because he decided not to use real world height map data, but he also set himself up to fail twice because the height map data that he used would never be able to span across the real world anyway. So this one is kind of double failed. Requirement okay. four. He himself, in his video, said he is using loading, and he even goes as far to make a joke of it back onto us like we don't understand what loading... 
this requirement also is very strange uh, to me. <laughs> that isn't like, I don't know how this works. Uh, it's a lot of technical stuff. Uh, but it says that the compressed height map has to be streamed from disk. So it, said he, it has to be compressed. Uh, and it has to be streamed from disk, not loaded. I don't know the difference. Uh, I, I, I don't know if Shane knows the difference. I don't know if Callum knows the difference. I don't know what the difference is. Okay. Uncompressed in the background on the CPU with multi-threading and the rest has to be done in shader on the GPU from what you'll be deriving things like curvature what curvature can be derived from a sphere in unity you don't have to put that <laughs> you don't have to calculate that from your height map da data uh, normal colors just like we have done from the height map data alone and the other tech that we built in so like if this this reads to me this rule reads to me we chose a specific path and it made things difficult and for you to sit there and say that we have bad a bad product you need to build it as badly as we have and <laughs> make it look as good as we have that's strange like if why would you say that <laughs> <laughs> um you like if Callum does it a better way like a more efficient way um then he is to be congratulated not failed <laughs> that's what it says to me I don't know about anyone else uh so I mean technically he might not have done what the challenge says but he might have done something better and and for that, you're going to bash him. He is using loading, and he even goes as far to make a joke of it back onto us like we don't understand. Shader on GPU, delivering colors, normal sounds normal to me. <laughs> yeah, the normal map is like, uh, there's some stuff in, in Unity. You have like, you can have a normal map. I, I assume that's what he means by normal. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's what shaders do. I know, I know. That's what Earth Two people keep doing. They uh, they describe things like it's standard, but they describe it in many words, uh, and it sounds like a lot of techno babbles, and um, it's quite amusing actually. <laughs> like, it's like why don't you just say you're using shaders? End. <laughs> understand what loading is in fact it's so simple that graphical user interfaces have been doing this since the beginning of time it's called loading yeah yeah i agree they say it's like it's a hard job uh and it is if you're building it yourself um you do it with DirectX, okay um i i don't even think about doing it i'm just creating a material and dragging it onto my model here <laughs> Like, and it, it happens to have a shader because it's built into Unity. So it's, yeah, I mean, like if they built the shaders themselves, that is impressive. But again, like, is that really a good way to spend your time and money? You drag and drop and shaders do the rest, lol. Yeah, they do. You've described how loading worked. That's it. It's just loading an image that was compressed on disk. So he has proven himself wrong here, and we appreciate his assistance. How He's did using he do... loading, not streaming, and unfortunately... What's the difference then? Surely Callum doesn't understand what the difference is. Yeah, Requirement yeah. For... What is the, the difference between loading and streaming? Difference between... Oh between loading and streaming. <laughs> oh, I never heard streaming loading, yes. What? I don't I didn't quite catch that, I'm sorry. 
Streaming minimizes the, the amount of time it takes per viewer to start viewing media over the internet. Oh, this is like over the internet, not from disk. So, uh, yeah. Maybe someone else has had better luck, but I I heard Josh Dryface in his videos. He said uh, he do doesn't, he couldn't find on the internet, like when he googled, he couldn't find the difference. So we don't know. Probably streaming is the fact that you load <laughs> what you show while you show data. Uh, yeah, so so then streaming is just loading over over time, and then in that case, loading is not disqualifying disqualifying you because loading data from the disk streams <laughs> give you gives you a stream of data from the disk. I don't like a video player does. Yeah, but it's still still just loading data from the disk. Like, what is the difference, Shane? Well, maybe he will explain it. Let's see. Loading, not streaming. And unfortunately, Callan doesn't understand what the difference is. Requirement four is failed by Callan himself. Requirement five, well. He, he didn't explain it. So how how is loading not streaming? Please tell me, Shane. Uh, uh, Shane should uh, explain this. You need to be able to have the same level of detail as Shiva. Oh no, this no, not this level, not not this number five again. I'm I'm so tired of it. We've already covered this, and that's yeah. Failed. We already covered Requirement it. Requirement six. There are already popping artifacts quite obvious through his video. So six yeah. is failed. But it let's is. look at the other. What is it? S navigate. The camera over the terrain without any popping artifacts or any typical clip map artifacts. Uh, yeah, uh, I agree that he failed this one because I saw um, popping and clip map art artifacts. So it is failed, uh, but uh, but it doesn't matter when you're making a game and the. And the artifacts, I had to like stare like over here to see it. And a player of a game would, wouldn't would see it. It wouldn't be on the player's mind. It doesn't take away from the game. It doesn't matter. The parts of six anyway. Because Cal I'm, To be clear. <laughs> oh no, I wanted to see the Eiffel to Tower in Vegas. Uh, yeah, there's no buildings here. Like Earth 2 doesn't have any buildings either. Um, to be clear, I, I already said like in the beginning of the stream that uh, technically Callum didn't meet all the requirements. And <laughs> so, so he can't have, uh, he can't claim that he won the challenge. However, Shane issuing the challenge and Callum coming this close for public relations uh, reasons, the smart thing would be uh, to say, good job, Callum. You, you did a really good job with what you presented here. It's really close. Here is like, even if he just gives like half of the money, like half, if you, he says, you didn't meet all the requirements, but you did a really good job. Here's half of the money. That's a good look. That he sh Shane should do that. Alan didn't use real-world height map data. It is very hard to tell whether he was actually moving at 50,000 kilometers per hour. But instead he made this whole bashing video. Like 50,000 kilometers per hour. He knows he did this. He even admitted that this is what he was going to do anyway. I take the terrain height map data, work out the distance of it per rendered tile, and try and use that as a measurement of kilometers, right? When you're trying to work out how fast your camera is moving in a game, you compare it to what is in the game, you, and you calculate the speed. That's what Callum just said. <laughs> you know, that's what you need to do. Right, I think that's the fairest way to, to go about that, because there's no other real reference for distance yeah. in a game engine. So yeah, I'm, he's completely right. That's the only way you could possibly do this. What I'm probably gonna have to do is uh, add a UI to this and do some maths trickery to convert world units to their perceived, like their perceived distance in. Um... And he says math trickery. 
he has mean math. Like he uh, he, he means that he needs to be creative with how he does th his math. He doesn't mean that he's gonna trick anyone. Uh, that's how I hear it anyway. Like map data, which again he can call me out on that and say, oh, but you, that's just a UI you put on there. But so obviously yeah. this is why he did. Yeah, there's no way to prove how fast the camera is going, really. <laughs> unless, you, unless you like model a motorway and put on like numbers um, along it and move the camera along that, maybe, I guess. Didn't want to show any details about the speed or even talk about it. Unfortunately, he failed twice again on requirement six. So this is actually another double fail. That's also in Unity. It, 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 he did move his camera pretty fast. Like none of us knows how fast it was going. None of us cares. Actually, did the requirement say how fast it has had to be going? I want to see number six. Navigate the camera over the terrain without any popping artifacts or any typical clip marks artifacts. Period. <laughs> and by the way, our camera that we used in the video is over fifty thousand kilometers per hour, so you'll need to do that too. Okay, so it says here that it has to be fifty thousand kilometers per hour. Okay, but at this distance. That's really slow. <laughs> anyway, I take the terrain height map data, work out the distance of it per rendered tile, and try and use that as a measurement of kilometers, right? I, I think that's the fairest way to, to go about that, because there's no other real reference. It says over. Yeah, over, yeah. But 50,001 kilometers is over, so it, does, it doesn't really distance. matter. Right. In a game engine. That's a really so small difference. What I'm probably going to have to do is uh, add a UI to this and do some maths trickery to convert world units to their perceived like their perceived distance in um like map data hmm. which again he can call me out on that and say oh but you, that's just a ui you put on there but so obviously this is why he didn't want to show any details about the speed or even talk about it unfortunately he failed twice again on requirement six so this is actually another double fail that's two double fails so far requirement seven we don't even well, know where to begin with as i said before like uh yeah he didn't do all all of the things but you nitpicking is not helping your image this one but we clearly stated similar to what we show in our video change the biomes and water level in real time similar similar to what we show in the videos similar is a really tricky word it doesn't really mean anything of course you can take a still shot and raise the water level up and down but this is slightly different from panning over the terrain at 50,000 kilometers per hour why didn't Callum just follow our challenge and show it similar to the way that we showed in our video, which was exactly what was required from him? Even ignoring the intentional deceit that Callum had you know, on required. I think he showed it similar, in a similar way. Like here, I this is Earth 2. Like how fast is, is the camera moving? We can't tell. It, it's impossible to tell. So it's similar. I'm at 5. He has failed with most of these requirements anyway. But for fun, let's just compare number seven because we did clearly state similar to what we show in our video. So <laughs> you similarly at... agree with me. Callum's <laughs> <laughs> right. water level rising and falling here. What do you have? And then we... What could you possibly have issues with this? What issues could you possibly have with this? Look at our water level rising and falling and biomes changing here. We're not sure how people could think that this is similar to what we how is it not similar? The water levels is going up and down. <laughs> we showed in our video. <laughs> How's not all, similar? Like thank you for watching this far and listening word to word. Oh my goodness, uh, I'm getting a real low blood sugar here, but <laughs> it's water and its levels. It's similar. Yes, like you need to 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 realize that similar is a really inexact word of the English language. It just says it has to. They should have said same, not similar. Exactly, exactly. Similar means like it has to remind you of the other thing. <laughs> when it does. So. Everything that I had to It's say. really we... petty after he has gone on about like not Mapbox not providing real 
uh, data for him and um, and the camera speed is not fast enough or whatever uh, it's really petty to just say that this water level rising is not similar to our water level rising because of reasons <laughs> You fail because your water has less pH than ours. Yeah. He issued Callum a challenge, and unfortunately, instead of just admitting how difficult that challenge... This is where he starts to talk really slow. I, I need to, like, show you the, the real speed of what he's talking. He's talking... Remember, he's talking to me now. He, this is a video on the YouTube. He's talking to me, and this is the speed he shows uh, to... to speed. Speaking. Really whinge, and unfortunately, instead of just admitting how difficult that challenge really was, it's like um, he doesn't think that I will be able to understand him if he speaks too fast. Fortunately, YouTube can speed him up for me because water. it's just too slow to sit through. He resorted to his deceptive ways to make people believe that he was telling the truth. This is almost twice the speed. <laughs> And I still think that he is uh, being slow. This is a common similarity that he has with the other YouTube friends who attack Earth 2 together. The sad part is that Callum has managed to fool hundreds of thousands of people into believing that Callum, fair and square, won this challenge. This is why he had to respond with such a detailed analysis. We had to respond with such a detailed analysis. Mission accomplished, I guess. <laughs> he speaks slow like we are dumb. Yeah, he's insulting me and expects my empathy that is uh, an equation that is not uh, adding up on this occasion the way he's misled people has really blown up into a very big problem now for him i'm sure callum realizes that most of his followers will never watch this video and never listen to what i have to say so i really do hope callum works out a way to let his followers know that he really didn't win this challenge i will say something though i said in my last video that if i was wrong about something i would come forward and admit that i was wrong if he doesn't do that then i do urge you to share this video to those who are really yeah so uh as I have stated before, I don't care about who Callum is. I'm just judging Shane here. <laughs> so so uh, he has proven that he is being like dishonest a few times. And uh, yeah. Be curious about whether he won or not. I issued the challenge to Callum and Callum's ego accepted it. To be honest, we were really disappointed at the response video that Callum provided with us. <laughs> I'm sorry, Father. Are you are you are you being disappointed in me? I'm sorry. Like he's acting like a parent trying to teach a kid something. I don't know. It was really just a video to comically mock Earth Two and not provide any insight into him actually solving any of the requirements. We did honestly think that Callum had a louder bark than a bite of a butterfly, but unfortunately, he didn't come through with the professional video that we expected in the end. And yes, that was really disappointing for us. So let's have one more look. Are you really though? Are you disappointed? He gave us something like this. We have also created a new proprietary and revolutionary global warming system. Snow melts, plants die, and seas rise in real time. When we were Isn't that funny? <laughs> I think it's funny. Certainly expecting to receive a response video based at least off real world height map data. I mean You know, uh Callum has uh, d explained why he doesn't show the tech. It's because Callum doesn't believe that Shane has the tech and Callum doesn't want to give it to Shane for free, and that's why he's just mocking him instead. Even British Columbia in Canada, I'm talking about something a little bit more like this. Oh, whoa, 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 <laughs> This is the most funny part of the entire video. Like, th this is so funny. Remember. Remember uh, this, where they were going on about proprietary tech, and I was like, the only way that they are honest here is if if they have built their own engine, and it's actually cool that they can change uh, colors of materials in this manner that I can do in Unity with their own tech instead of just Unity tech. Um, so then, what does he say here? Even British Columbia in Canada, I'm talking about something a little bit more like this. <laughs> and it's blurred out up here so that we shouldn't like know. 
This is Unity, isn't it? This looks an awful lot like Unity. Like, if this is not Unity, then you ripped Unity off. <laughs> and if it is, then aren't you using the Unity game engine? That is not your proprietary tech. <laughs> this is... This is the <laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna end this video here because, uh, like, this says it all. Or this stream. Wrong, they used Unity. <laughs> the Shin just Chinese Unity. <laughs> oh, I see. But I'm gonna end it here because... Uh, They have stated that this is our price. Dielectric material and even for the coloration adjustment on numerous visual components, but goes further by supporting <laughs> the alteration the of surface types such as metallic or dielectric material. I mean, only like, a incredible wanna... amount of surface customization on a shader system that will provide earth to this specialized 3D object is using our proprietary shader system. That will... Their proprietary shader system. They're, they're not using unity then are they or did they coded their own shader system into unity and in that case why if you catch somebody lying about one thing it's quite often that they're lying about a lot of other things about i can't so yeah i need to go and have breakfast i can't take any more of this <laughs> yeah you can but don't be so preoccupied of whether or not you you can to forget so that you forget to ask whether or not you should like what's the point of it is that a good use of your time to do your own when you already have it right there like and if so because look at this what what is better about this than what we already have in unity that's what you need to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. So uh, I find this extremely funny. <laughs> anyway, uh, I need to go eat breakfast now. I can't take any more of change bullshit. So um, have a super duper time until next time I see you and uh, goodbye.